from the Paul and Catherine Ranke Memorial Studio. This is TV Free Baltimore. Watching Maryland politics here on TV Free Baltimore. Hello and welcome to Maryland politics. I'm your host, Louise Baker. In the studio this evening, we have Rick Rambo, candidate for Harford County Council President. He seeks to preserve and protect Harford County. He is a believer in personal liberty, the Bill of Rights, and Maryland's Declaration of Rights. Welcome, Rick Grambo, to the studio. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So I want you to start out by telling us a little bit about yourself, your background, and what made you decide to run for office. Okay. Uh, I've lived in Harford County almost my entire life. Um, I am the pres uh, vice president, I'm sorry, the vice president of a successful manufacturing company in Baltimore. I am the former president of the Harford County Board of Ed. So I know Harford County politics. I know who the players are. I understand what the people want in Harford County. You asked why I got into politics, why I wanted to get into politics. I have to tell you, when I left uh, the Board of Education, I thought I had my fill, and I was very happy to get back into the private sector. Uh, however, when, when Larry Hogan declared certain people non-essential and said you weren't allowed to go to work, uh, I looked around Harford County, and no one was standing up against this tyranny. No one stood up and said, this is wrong. People have a right to live. They have a right to work. So at that point, I decided I'd get involved. So Governor Hogan closed down churches, schools, institutions that were deemed not essential, all because of COVID. Do you think Governor Hogan had the authority, or does Governor Hogan have the authority to infringe on businesses and personal people's individual rights? Absolutely not. Uh, you mentioned all the things that you mentioned are things that are essential to life. So our rights come from our creator. That's what the Declaration of Independence says. So no tyrant has the ability to take away our rights. None. Uh, the, the, the Constitution does not allow someone to create emergency powers and decide who gets to live and who doesn't get to live. So I think we're very clear that Governor Hogan overstepped his boundaries and became a tyrant. You see this as tyranny and a violation of our Constitution. Absolutely. And it's long past time for Americans to stand up and, and realize that local governments are, what, are where the power is and that we need to lead our constituents to freedom, as corny as that sounds. That's, where we need, that's what we need to do now. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the costs um, to businesses and individuals, particularly in Harford County, where you come from? Um, yeah, unfortunately, if your business is not allowed to run and create revenue and you've got outstanding loans or debts, you, you're going to fail. You're going to go under. Um, that creates all sorts of problems for people, including mental health issues. I'm sure that there are more than one family that broke up, uh, fa families having people commit suicide, all sorts of horrible things happen when you're not allowed to do the things necessary to live. Okay. So one of your um, platform agenda concerns is to end overdevelopment and poorly planned commercial projects. Can you tell me why that's such a concern of yours, particularly in Harford County? Yeah. Oh. Harford County has been run by the good old boy network for a long time. Uh, developers are, are a lot like hungry dogs. They will eat all they can eat if you don't tell them to stop. So in Harford County, the developers, if you go and look up the campaign finance contributions of the people in charge, you're going to find out that the developers run Harford County. Uh, this has never been more clear recently. If you've been following the, the Perryman issue, you'll see that. Um, these guys need to be checked a little bit. Uh, I'm not suggesting that development is bad, but it needs to be done properly. It needs to be done right, and the county council is in charge of zoning, and they need to make decisions based on what's good for the people, not what's good for their donors. So education is um, of high concern to many, many parents, people, individuals, grandparents, etc. And the Maryland Department of Education is currently talking about a curriculum that involves teaching very young children, um, sexuality and gender ideology. Can you tell us a little bit about how you feel about that, what your thoughts are about that curriculum? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that, that I've been heavily involved in is 
lead, leading people to the Board of Education to speak out. Uh, unfortunately, our Board of Education is very combative, and they're still uh, doing remote meetings, Zoom meetings and things. Um, it's gotten to the point where some brave moms have decided to read some of the books and lessons from the school, and they found out that, that the Board of Education won't let them. They say these, these things are obscene and they're vulgar. Well, how come they're still allowed to teach them to our, our children? Um, there's a lot of harm being done. Suicide ideations are way up. Uh, it's, it's really very sad what's happening to our children. The most vulnerable among us are being preyed upon by these people to just simply create the, uh, panic and, and create a, a situation where they can gain more power and control over your lives. I see that you are involved in a cre er, in creation of legislation to bring school choice to Harford County. Do you think school choice is a solution against some of this indoctrination and what's going on in the public schools right now? Uh, absolutely, I do. So when I was involved in the school system before, I was very pro-school choice. Um, I didn't quite understand how we were going to go about doing that at the time. Uh, since then, I've reached out to, to several people across the country, and there's, there's legislation in other places. Harford County is fortunately a fairly wealthy county. We can do this. We can make it so that a parent's money follows their students. Um, that way, parents have more choices. And I believe this should be done with, with tax, uh, tax deductions, things like that, rather than vouchers, because sometimes vouchers allow a government to control too much of where the children go to school. Um, if, we can, if we're successful and we can put some school choice legislation in, I think you'll see the school system have to heal a little bit and listen to the parents. Because right now it's obvious they are not listening to the parents. And I do understand that a lot of this gets pushed down from the state level. However, these are our kids. We have a local board and we are in control. So the Maryland Department of Education has recently released a new school curriculum. And that curriculum involves uh, sexuality and some gender identity ideology for very young children. Um, third grade and you know, kindergarten to third grade. Can you tell me how you, what, what are your thoughts about that? And, and are you in agreement? Or are you opposed to that kind of curriculum? So I'll add to your question. They also released this with no option for parents to opt in. And they've made it very difficult for them to opt out. So this, this particular curr curriculum is vulgar. Let, let's face it. It is obscene material. The material is so obscene that the, county count, the Harford County Council would not allow material that was in the school libraries to be read in council. And the Board of Education did the same thing. They threw parents out for reading material that they got from the library in the schools. Um, that's obviously a problem. Parents are outraged. And unfortunately, the school system acts like this isn't even there. I see that you're, you're for some... Um creation of legislation to bring school choice into Harford County. Do you think school choice is a solution um, to avoid this public school's indoctrination of, of our students? I do. I think school choice would be a wonderful way to help parents opt out of the system that they're not happy with. There's a lot of great choices uh, that are not government-run schools, but those choices are expensive. Unfortunately, in Harford County, almost your entire property tax is put towards the school system. So if we can allow pa parents with school-age children to use that money to send their kids where they see fit, we can help create school choice legislation. So, so help me to understand, instead of necessarily having the money follow the child, which is what we hear a lot of other mm -hmm. candidates propose, you're suggesting this is handled through... Harford County citizens' property taxes. At, at least that. I would like to do more, um, but I know that's something that Harford County can do. Uh, and I have reached out to people across the country, actually, to look for uh, solutions that are being used in other parts of the country so that we can grab some good legislation that's already out there and start changing it up and drafting it to work in Harford County as a solution. What about your thoughts on... Critical race theory, CR, CRT being taught in class classroom. Unfortunately, that the, the, there's no room for that to be taught in school. We need to get back to science, math. Uh, the, you know, they talked about STEM ten years ago. That's all they talked about. Well, now they've completely abandoned that in favor of 
teaching our children some really hateful stuff about about people. It's very divisive material. It's unfortunate, especially for the younger kids who haven't necessarily uh, have biases and things. Why are we intentionally creating biases in children? It doesn't make sense. If elected, do you have any kind of specific power or authority as um, county council president? Absolutely. So, so as the board president, I realized, and, and everybody realizes that um, the school system, government school system, decides how the money's spent. However, the funding authority is the county council and the co and the county executive. They provide about half the funds to the school system. So, anybody that has a funding authority over somebody else realizes that they do have some influence and some power. Uh, obviously, you have to fund the schools at, at uh, the, the minimum requirement. However, over the past several years, Harford County has funded well above the minimum. If you're going to fund above the minimum, we want to make sure that the curriculum you're teaching works for the people in Harford County, that it's not morally objectionable for them. So you're very, very clear on your thoughts about the lockdowns and never letting us lock down again. So let's talk about mask mandates. And Dr. Flip Flop Fauci, <laughs> who um, at one point said masks don't do anything to help prevent the spread, and then said masks are essential to helping uh, avoid the spread. And certainly, I'm not a scientist, you're not a scientist, but you want to tell um, our viewers a little bit about what you would intend to do with regard to future mask mandates well just like lockdowns lockdowns can never be allowed to happen again mask mandates can never be allowed to happen again there's been a lot of studies and a lot of science since then and they have not proven that these masks help anybody i don't think that a porous piece of cloth placed over your mouth is doing you any good um, there's been quite a few studies that show the, the harmful bacteria and things that collect in them and that they're not good for your immune system. So it's pretty simple. If you choose to wear a mask on your own, that's perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that. But we're not going to force kids and force people into doing something that could be potentially harmful for their health. Now it's, I think it's very clear it was damaging to young children's ability to learn how to read and to see their teacher's mouth. Yes. It's, 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 terribly, it's terribly sad. Great point. So do you think that the expert scientists, do um, you think they politicized COVID? Unfortunately, they absolutely have politicized COVID. You can see that because they scream. Whenever anybody's screaming and shouting that there's the debates over and we're not allowed to debate, you know something's going on. This happens a lot. Uh, the chosen scientists are the ones we're supposed to listen to. But we all know, and we learned long ago, that science is about uh talking about different theories and, and people experimenting and learning what's happening. It's not, it, the answers change as you go along. So they have not participated in scientific debate. They have not allowed any scientists to have opposing views. It's obvious that there's, there's a political agenda. Well, thank you so much. Um, we need you to provide our viewers with a closing statement and please let them know why they should vote for you. Okay, well... I appreciate that. Uh, federal and state governments have engaged in overreach never, never before seen in my lifetime. Um, this is tyranny. Uh, one of the things that we need to eliminate in this country is tyranny. So I am running uh, to oppose tyranny. We need local leaders who will step up, who will interpose themselves between the tyrants and the people, who will lead the people. Look, we're not going to do this alone. I'm not going to be able to stand there if everybody behind me takes a step back and sits down. But... A local leader showing the people how to stand up, how to oppose this, can have a huge effect, not only in this county, but it will be contagious. It will take off, and we'll have people all over the country peacefully opposing this tyrannical overreach, and it won't happen. Government is, is only as good as what the people, or, or as bad as what the people will allow it. If, if we don't allow them to tread all over us, they won't be able to. Can you share your contact information? Uh, absolutely. So my website is um, GramboForHarford.com. I can be contacted. This is real simple. RickGrambo at gmail.com. Um, there's a, there's a, a Facebook page, too. Uh, I haven't personally been using Facebook very long, so I don't know how to explain how to find it. But I think if you look for Grambo for Harford, you'll, you'll find it. 
Well, thank you for sharing your time with us this evening. Well, thank you for having me. And good luck with your it. campaign. Thank you very much. I all appreciate right. it. And thank you all for watching Maryland Politics. Please like and subscribe to our channel, YouTube, TV Free Baltimore. I'm your host, Louise Baker. Take care, stay safe, and please join us for our next interview. Bye. You're watching Maryland Politics here on TV Free Baltimore.